Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? After nearly 100 years of manipulation, debasement and distrust, can Americans ever return to an honest money system again? Tonight, the path to constitutional money and the virtues of a free market. What would it take for us to return to a gold standard? Well, believe it or not, the president could do this on his own, just as an American president ended the gold standard on his own. Of course, returning us to convertibility would arouse the wrath of the big government types and the central bankers, as they would lose their ability to manipulate our currency, to print cash as at will, to control our behavior, and of course, to enrich themselves. Convertibility meant that anyone could bring U.S. dollars to the U.S. Treasury Department's gold window and receive gold, real gold, in return. This was a legal requirement respected by the government and honored by it until President Nixon on his own in 1971 directed the Treasury to stop converting dollars into gold. This was the third and final nail in the coffin of the gold standard. The other two nails have been hammered by Abraham Lincoln and Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Lincoln instituted paper money during the Civil War and refused to deliver gold to those who demanded it. FDR unilaterally prohibited ownership of all gold other than jewelry by anyone except the government. Both of these decisions raised grave constitutional issues. In Lincoln's case, he defied the constitutional requirement of precious metals as the basis for currency. And in FDR's case, he defied the constitutional principle that the government only has the powers that the people have given to it, and the people never authorized the government to confiscate their gold. In both cases, the courts shirked their duties to uphold the Constitution and let those tyrannical presidents go about destroying liberty and prosperity. Do we have enough gold to return to convertibility? Well, the big government types who were whispering into President Nixon's ear persuaded him that there can be too much or too little of anything. Oh, but they forgot that the natural, quali the natural quality of money is scarcity, and because it is scarce, it has value. If this were not so, Nothing would prevent us from just printing our way to prosperity. Of course, the Federal Reserve, to the contrary, notwithstanding, if we printed an infinite amount of money, then the money would be worthless. That's why gold and silver are valuable and will be traded, despite all the heavy laws and thieving taxation that renders gold owners as outlaws in many ways. That's also why countries that have tried to print their way to prosperity have ended up with wheelbarrows of cash needed to buy a loaf of bread. If government stopped taxing gold and silver as if they were a toothbrush or a car, gold and silver would circulate as currency once again. That way, gold or silver or both could make their way into the hands of the poor and the middle class. This is truly a free market way to spread the wealth. If we abolished legal tender laws, those laws which permit the government to print worthless paper money, that would be a step on the road toward freedom and prosperity. If the Federal Reserve no longer held a monopoly on the money supply, then finally banks would be free from the crippling burdens of regulation by Washington and fixed interest rates determined by bureaucrats. Then we would see real competition among the banks for your business. Banks would only lend money that they had on deposit. Abolishing legal tender laws means that a private bank can mint a coin and create a banknote similar to how the Fed does it. Only this time it would be backed by gold. Even digital currencies could be created, as we could trade online goods and services for digital coins that have value to those who decide to trade in them. Think of it. We could have a new economy, no longer weighed down by the ancient institutions in Washington and regulated only by fair competition, the laws of supply and demand, and a government that protected us only from force and from fraud. Finally, when gold and silver become currencies again, as the Constitution clearly requires, when government-issued paper money is abolished, we can begin to clean up the mess that has become the American banking system. Banks, for example, will no longer be required to have FDIC insurance and all the costs and regulations that accompany it. Think about it. The federal government has no business insuring your money in somebody else's bank. Instead, private insurance companies would come in and insure that money. Liberty means opportunity for more private enterprise and a government that does less, regulates less, and extracts less from taxpayers. When all this happens, then we will see the opposite of what has happened when the feds devalued the dollar by separating it from gold. A gold-backed currency, as I write in my book, it is dangerous to be right when the government is wrong, will chase the worthless currency from the marketplace. Stated differently, 
It would be the free market's way of driving the money changers from the temple and the constitutional way of ridding ourselves of the chains the government and its bankers have shackled upon us. From New York, defending